everyone, this is Jackson Point, and I wanted to get into part two of SHTF comms with the i355. This is part two. A couple of things I want to show you today is the usability of the uh, private channel or the private uh, configuration as well as the code receive all setting up one channel and all codes also some accessories and the first thing I'm going to get into is showing you how that uh, I can go from one channel to another and right now I have one programmed as code 2 and it's going to be the second one from your left so when I transmit on a standard transmission here as you can see the leftmost which is the one that's receiving all call and the one that's set to the uh, one to the right is set for code 2. So now I'm going to change it, this radio that I have here to code 3 and we're here so what you'll see now is the first one and then the last three activate. One, two, three, one, one two, three. Two, three, one, two, three. And as you notice the second one did not activate. One of the really cool things you can do with this is to use the private call function and what that is is you set up an individual number on each one of your radios here. Well, currently I'm using the same digit string as what you would use in a 10 digit telephone number. What I use uh, typically, uh, at least to make sense to me, is to use the area code that I'm from and maybe the first three digits of the zip code and then the variable would be the four digits for the phone. The reason why I want to make it so many digits is I want to make it hard for somebody to figure out and I'll get to that later on. In any event, as long as you are in the same channel, you can call anybody else in that channel. I'm going to call the one that is going to be the second one from the left. What I'm going to do is show you how that to using the private call function you can isolate a phone that is set up or a, excuse me a radio as I'm going to call them from now on that is set up to receive all call from receiving anything on that channel and it, what again it doesn't matter what ch uh, code it is on just as long as it's on the same channel you being in uh, code 2 or code 3 or code 15 or whatever is going to be able to talk to that person on the private channel so I'm going to bring that person up now and I'm, I'm entering their number okay and here I go I'm going to transmit and this should be uh, activating the second radio from the left test test test, test, test. and if you notice the radio on the far left that is set to receive everything on all code did not activate now I'm going to go ahead and call one that's in a code 3 Let's see what we got here. And as you can see, I'm calling a code 3 radio. I'm calling a code 3 radio and uh, once again code 2 or code 3 all I did is reach that individual radio. What's nice about this is once I've done that activation that the person that I've called they don't have to do anything else to remain in that private channel or that private configuration all they have to do is press the push to talk switch and they're talking back to me if they want to get out of that mode they just press the back button and they're back into the all call function and once again I'll show that the three code threes and the one code all will react to my code three response one two, three. one two three and I'm gonna to go to code two again alright and what you're gonna see is the first two radios react and there we go okay in just a second after I set up I'm gonna show you how you can use the private function to isolate radios completely from the all call function and use it as a all call even though people that might be set up to listen to everything on any particular code on a channel might be prepared to hear it even though you're using a private channel they won't be able to hear it and once again what you will be able to do is set up multiple radios with the same private number
Okay, I've made some modifications to the radios that are on the far right, the two of those. Those have been both set up for the same private line number as well as the radio I have in my hand. What I'm going to do is bring up both of those phones at the same time by dialing their private line. You can see one, two, three. Both of them have activated, and yet the one that's on the far left, which is set to code receive all, didn't hear anything. And I can grab this one right here and respond, and the other two radios will receive accordingly. So what you've done is you've created a super private all call function as long as everybody's set to the same number. That is very beneficial for a couple reasons. One, if you want to maintain security, people don't have to know the all call number that you're using. The more digits you use, the less likely someone's going to be able to come into your area or onto your channel and code and inter interfere, interrupt, eavesdrop, or whatever. I also did not change the code. So the two phones that are on the far right are still code 3, yet the phone I'm using to transmit is on code 2. So again, the privacy functions works within intercode. It doesn't work within interchannel to my knowledge. It would be a good opportunity to test it out though, but I'm going to guess that it's not going to. and it says user unavailable. So it doesn't hear anything when I'm doing it and I'm going to go back to just tra transmitting to on code 3 so that you can see which phones activate and so I'll transmit code 3 and then you'll see again because I was transmitting on the all call non-private that uh, that included the code receive all phone to the far left. So to explain this again, basically if every phone has its own private line, doesn't matter what code you're on, you're going to have a private communications between the two of you. You're better off to use more digits, less likely for somebody to take a chance on getting it. You know, if you use two digits, you know, they have one through 99 chances to figure it out. Use enough digits, it's not going to uh, really give them much chance. It goes up to 20 digits. And the thing about it is you only have to enter it once. You can also enter it into your SIM card. And if you want to, you can enter it once and then get one of those SIM copiers and copy it to all your SIMs and then name your radios. Having uh, an individual private number is good for keeping privacy between you and another radio. It also jumps codes when you're using private so you don't, you're not code specific. Uh, having multiple radios on one private number will allow you to have an all call function that is very private uh, in the way that a code receive all radio will not be able to, to hear it. So that's a, a, probably a pretty good demonstration of one of the best security aspects of this radio altogether. The IDEN has a lot of us usability. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into how to remove and replace an antenna. All right, now we're going to get into removing the antenna off of one of these to go ahead and put a better antenna. It's a pretty simple product process. You just need a screwdriver. This is the width of the screwdriver. And I do not know the, what they call the width of the screwdriver, but basically it looks like it's about a little bit wider than the top of the uh, antenna here. You put it in, and when you spin it around a little bit, you'll feel it slide into a slot. You can just start spinning around. You notice that the antenna is spinning around with it. And within a few seconds, you're going to get to the point where the whole thing will pop out. And I think I'm there right now. Pull that whole thing out. And there we go. That's the antenna. You're done. Put your other antenna in. Slide it in. And there you, that's the end of it. Now, you notice how this part came apart. Sometimes this will be left in there. I don't know what the necessity of this is. Maybe it's to keep the bottom from shorting up against there. The inside of the radio there's a part that this may short up against that will cause the radio to not receive well. I don't know that it makes any difference if you leave that part in there, but I've been taking it out and keeping it with the antenna. So the way I get it out is I take a cotton swab and remove the cotton off the one end. Shove it down there, twist a little bit, and it pulls out. Okay, here I'm demonstrating the 6-bay charger made specifically for this radio and I think the 325 as well. 
and what's nice about this is it will charge either batteries or phones uh, you just uh, the batteries have to be slid down straight down and then le leaned over to an angle and what you can find out about it is whether or not if the uh, particular battery is charged up in your phone when you put it in there if it starts blinking we'll find out here in a second it's not charged up all the way and as you can see when it's steady it is charged up let's see let me get one of these out that I haven't had charged for a while and see if it'll start charging whoops you gotta have the cover closed or it won't work right and as you can see all of these are pretty well charged they've been hooked up with the charger for most of this demonstration so these are uh, it's a great device kind of expensive uh, I recommend it as a way to keep radios charged up all the time and ready it's also a good way to uh, test your batteries out okay here I'm demonstrating a couple of the uh, carrying cases or holsters this one here is hard plastic and it connects face front snaps in holds the radio pretty well this one here as normally it has two straps if you can see one of the straps is missing right there and I'll explain that in a second but you can slide a radio down in there all the way and as you can see if it hits that one strap it's not going to come out even if that strap slides to the side it's going to be really hard to push that thing all the way out I don't know the benefit of one over the other uh, they both have pretty good clasps they both will um, not come off too easily this one does not rotate this one does one of the things you want to look at if you get your hands on these before ordering them is a couple of these may come where the rotators are very loose basically wore out and useless next I want to show you two different handsets or these are called uh, speaker mics and they are two different models As you can see they don't look the same on the top this one has a controllable mic gain and volume control the better of the two which you're going to find the most expensive has a double latching system right here it latches on the inside of the outer case of the phone and it also latches to the uh, what would you call that I guess the connector latch and you can see this one comes off at a 90 degree angle this one is not quite as secure uh, you're, you're gonna see that this will pop off every now and then as it only latches to the inside of the connector when you're using this type of case you pretty much have to uh, you can get away with just you not cutting that extra piece out but you have to cut that extra piece out to put this connector on there you still have to be cautious as uh, using this mic here let me show you the top of it using this mic here the phone could pull out or the radio could pull out pull out this has a rotating back or a rotating clasp as well as this one does too you can see a definite difference in quality between these two as far as what they sound like they pretty much sound the same